Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you The Master Race, starring George Kouloris, Nancy Gates, Stanley Ridges, Paul Guilfoyle, and Helen Beverly. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Not long ago, there fell into Allied hands a sensational, secret, 60-page memorandum prepared by the recent German military governor of Paris. He says in part, our defeat in the present war need not be considered except as an incident in the triumphal march of Germany toward the conquest of the world. What does temporary defeat matter? if through the destruction of people and material wealth in enemy countries, we emerge with a margin of superiority even greater than that of 1939. And he adds, in the next world war, which should take place within 25 years, the principal adversary will be the United States. And our entire effort must be concentrated against this country from the beginning. A transcription of this document was sent to me by a research group in New York, which had been collecting an exhaustive amount of data on German secret plans for World War III. Among them is a recorded statement by General von Rundstedt, leader of the current German offensive on the Belgian front, who says, total destruction of our neighbors and their wealth is indispensable to our future victory. Now, this fanatical doctrine of a cunning, strong, and devilish enemy, who once he has laid down arms in public, prepares to take them up again in secret, is the subject of tonight's story, RKO's dramatic hit, The Master Race. We are fortunate in having on our stage almost the entire original cast of that important screenplay. George Coloris, Stanley Ridges, Nancy Gates, Helen Beverly, and Paul Guilfoyle. This week, as we were rehearsing tonight's play, I, I thought of how lucky we are over here. We have the right to listen to any radio program we please, whereas in Germany, you would be shot if you were caught listening to tonight's play. And I further thought how, in spite of war conditions, we are able to buy such a good product as Lux Toilet Soap. Our women are free to preserve what is the rightful heritage of women, loveliness and daintiness. Whereas in Germany, you'd be allowed, if you were lucky, only a small portion of a standardized inferior soap. So let us be grateful for our freedom. And let us each and every one determine to help the war effort with every bit of our strength and will. Now on to our story. As we bring you the first act of The Master Race, starring George Coloris as von Beck, Nancy Gates as Nina Warren, Stanley Ridges as Major Carson, Helen Beverly as Martha, and Paul Guilfoyle as Katri. In an obscure village in Germany, a group of high-ranking Nazi officers are gathered in secret to settle plans of vital importance, not only to Germany, but to the future of the world. Attention! General von Beck will give you instructions. You have been assembled at the command of the general staff. The fortress of Europe is falling. The Third Reich has proved a failure. The battle is lost. But at this moment in our history, I ask you to remember who we are. We have been masters in Europe for a thousand years. But never has Europe been so completely dead. In that lies our great hope. And to sustain that hope, we must go into hiding. We must stay alive, preserve our master race. You are entering a German hating Europe. In our hands, hatred can be turned into the most potent of all weapons. Hatred of any kind, against anyone, even hatred against Germans. If you find one who is in dire want, 
turn that want into impatience, impatience into fear, fear into despair, and despair into hatred. Remember, you will not be working alone. Disunite, 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 and stay alive. <laughs> In a hundred other secret meeting places throughout the Third Reich, this scene has been repeated as a cornered, snarling Germany prepares for the next and final war against humanity. A Germany that has learned from bitter experience the deadly power of the underground. A Germany that at this very moment prepares to use that weapon to renew its struggle for world domination. Have your orders. Memorize them and destroy them. Till we meet again. Dismissed. Colonel von Beck. Yes. All arrangements have been completed. As you instructed, you will be taken by car to the prison camp at Kolar, Belgium. Yes, excellent. I am to be a political prisoner, eh? To your fellow prisoners, you will be a victim of the Gestapo. You have the identification papers? Here, sir. They belong to a man named Ferdinand Varin. Ferdinand Varin. The Allies? Are they far from Kolar? They should take possession in a few days. Good. Let me have your gun. Sir... You still feel it necessary to wound yourself? Captain, a wound is a very convincing thing. And a clean bullet through the leg is a very simple matter. I have to bandage your ready. The tourniquet? Yes, sir. Apply it immediately. Yes, Colonel. Yeah, this should be about the spot. Ah, good morning, Martha Varin. <gasps> you... Colonel von Beck. No, no longer Colonel von Beck. Excuse me. No, no. You can't come in here. But I'm already in. Uh, my leg. You'll excuse me if I sit down. But, Colonel, you don't understand. The Allies. Yes, yes, I understand perfectly. The Allies have just captured Kola, and your fellow townsmen are eager to get revenge on the wife and daughter of the town's hated collaborator. Yes, I readily understand your panic. Then, then why are you here? What chance of you, a German officer? I'm no longer a German officer. That's why I'm wearing these clothes. And you forget, Mrs. Varin, that when I was Colonel von Beck, it was you who came to me in Carnot to receive the money for your work. No one has seen me as a German officer in Kola. You expect me to protect you, hide you? That's impossible. The war for us is over. You can't stay here. I'm afraid you dismiss the past too easily, Martha Varin. The people of Kola won't forgive you, even if you hand me over. That very action would be confirmation of your dealings with us. Then, what do you want? I want to live. And each of us can make that possible for the other. But how? Your husband collaborated with the Germans. His death hasn't wiped out that stain. But your husband's brother, Ferdinand, had an altogether different career. <laughs> an enemy of Germany, a Belgian patriot. What has that to do with us? For all I know, he's still fighting in the South. No, he was captured and later killed so that I could come into possession of his papers. You? His... Papers. Yes, I've just given them to the American commander here. You see, as Ferdinand Varin, I became a prisoner of the Germans. They moved me to Belgium, to the prison camp here in Kola. And this morning, the noble allies presented all of us with our freedom. But you'll be recognized. By whom? The people of Kola, I don't remember Ferdinand. My records show he hasn't visited the town since he was a child. <laughs> you know, I should worry more about yourself if I were you. Yeah, yourself and Nina. I, I did what I thought was good for Nina, to protect her. She won't have to suffer. Do you look for mercy among men whose wives and daughters have been killed by German bullets? It won't hurt your cause to have in this family a patriot hero, a man who was wounded fighting for, the, fighting for the Allies. Don't you understand? My presence here may make the difference between life and death for you and Nina. Oh, but of course, if you still insist that I... No. Should... No, I... You... You must stay. Martha, you're a sensible woman. Now, listen to me. Together, we can build security for all three of us. I talked with Joseph Cartry in the prison camp before we were released. He used to be manager of my husband's mill. Yes, so he said. Now, he's coming to see me after the meeting that the Allied officers have called at the town hall. Coming here? Cartry hates us. Well, why not? He has every reason to hate you. His home is in ruins while yours stands. But he'll change. Hatred can often be twisted to one's own ends. And now, I think I like to meet my young niece, Nina. Nina isn't here. She's gone to the town hall. Oh, but the meeting is only for the men of Kola. She's gone in the hope of seeing one of them. Hmm. Frank Bartok, a young man who was fighting in the hills. Young man, eh? <laughs> you know, I keep forgetting Nina will have grown up. 
She wasn't more than three when she last saw her Uncle Ferdinand. Come. I'll show you to your room, Please Colonel. remember Ferdinand, Ferdinand. I already feel very secure here, Martha. With one exception, all the men are present, Major Carson. One exception? Ferdinand Varin with a wounded leg. He asked to be excused. Oh, yeah. Uh, would you like me to introduce you now? No, thanks, Forsyth. I'll introduce myself. Gentlemen, <clears throat> I'm Major Philip Carson of the United States Army. I asked you here because, in a sense, you're all that's left of the town of Kola. I know that as Belgian patriots, many of you until this morning have been prisoners of the Germans. Others have been fighting as guerrillas in the hills. I know that you're tired and hungry, and some of you are wounded. Nevertheless, I must ask help and work from all of you. We have only one object here, and that is to get you on your feet as quickly as possible. Your mills are gone, and so are your shops. Your big job is in your fields. We must clean them, plow them, and plant them. And above all, we've got to work together and trust each other. That's the most important thing. Well, I guess that's about all. Don't misunderstand our silence, Major. It takes a lot of strength to applaud. None of us is looking for applause, sir. But if there are no questions, there are one or two of you that I'd like to have come forward. Joseph Cartry. Here, Major. Cartry, you are the only remaining member of the original town council, right? Yes, sir. Also, you once operated the town's principal mill. It was the only mill. It was destroyed. We can rebuild mills, Catry. What we need now is men and leadership. Your record recommends you highly. I'll need a civilian assistant. Would you like the job? I'll do what I can, Major. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lieutenant Andre Krestov. I am Lieutenant Krestov, Major. Ah, I see you wear the Russian Star of Gold, Lieutenant. I would like to know how soon I can get back to the Russian front, Major. I'm afraid that's impossible. While the war's on, we can't repatriate any nationals. Your papers show that you were in the medical corps. Oh, yes, sir, doctor. Oh, I'm glad of that. We're going to need your help. I can see at least one patient for you now, that man with his arm in a sling. His name's Frank Bartok. Uh, came in just this morning. Mm -hmm. Bartok? Yes, sir? He was fighting with the guerrillas in the hills. How's that arm of yours, Bartok? Not too bad, sir. I want the doctor to have a look at it. Can I come back later, sir? There's somebody I want to see. She may be waiting outside now. Oh, a girl, huh? Yes, sir. And my family, I haven't seen them for three years. Well, I guess the arm can wait then. But check with Lieutenant Kristoff sometime before noon. Thank you, sir. Nina. Oh, Nina, I've waited for this so long. Now it's happened. I can't believe it. You're wounded, Frank. It's nothing. Let me look at you. Oh, you'll never change about me, will you, Frank? You you won't leave me, will you? Leave you? What kind of talk is that our first day home? Oh, it, it's just that so much has happened that could come between us. Nothing has happened that could come between us, Nina. Nothing. We've been apart, but all the time I felt you were with me, fighting for something we both believed in. But the fighting's over, Frank. I want to go away, just the two of us, to some other town, anywhere. There isn't any town in Belgium different from ours, Nina. Wherever our people have fought and resisted, you'll find ruins. But we'll put Cola on its feet again. We'll show them. Come on, we'll go to my house first and... Nina, my family, are they... I, I don't know. I haven't seen much of them. I think it's better for you to go alone, Frank. Maybe you're right. My first time back. Nina, you're trembling. No, no, I'm not. But after you've seen them, be sure to come back to me. Quickly. Give me another kiss. Oh, Frank. Frank, I love you so. I'll be at your house in an hour. After five years, an hour isn't so long, is it? Helena. Frank. The heroes come home. What's the matter? Has your brother changed that much? Yes, we've changed. We all have. Frank, your arm. It's nothing. Where's Mother? Mother died last winter. You brought me word she was sick. I tried to come, I couldn't. She understood. And Marie, she must be a big girl now. Last time I saw her, you were teaching her to walk. Where is she? Helena, what's happened? They killed her. 
They couldn't have. Marie? How do you mean they couldn't have? The Germans could do anything. And did. But a child... That didn't stop them. She was not a member of the master race. Well, at least, Eleni, you'll have John. I saw him in the hills. He's safe. He's coming back. Yes. Well, there are many women who have lost their husbands. What's he coming back to? Our home in ruins. Marie gone. I, uh, I saw Nina on the way here. She at least is safe. They didn't harm her. No, they didn't harm her. Why do you say it like that? She's just as pretty as ever. Just as healthy and young. No, the Germans didn't harm the Varens. The Varens were too useful to them. Far too useful. And if you ever go near that house again, you needn't come back here. <laughs> Ah, come in, Katri, come in. You know, excuse me, my leg is keeping me in bed. This house. The Baron house. I swore I'd never set foot in it. You have set foot in it, my dear Katri, as the first step to destroying it. That's why I sent for you. What can we do? The Allies are in charge in Kola. The Allies are interested in Kola, only to the extent that it will benefit their military operations. Why do you think the American major put so much emphasis on agriculture? Why, <laughs> they don't want to have to feed us. But will they give us tools to work with? Will they give us a chance? Oh, they'll give us promises. Why should they want to give more? What more we get, we must get for ourselves. With what? Katri, you once told me you had a horse. One horse that they have borrowed from me for plowing. <laughs> once you were manager of the mill. The Varen Mill is ruined. Why do you call it the Varen Mill? It lost that name the day my brother sold out to the Nazis. You gave your life to that mill. It probably belongs to you, Katri. Of what use is a gutted framework to me? I told you what the American major said. First things must come first, and the mill comes last of all. Yes, has it ever occurred to you that the Americans may not want the mill rebuilt? At any rate, not by us. Why shouldn't they? Well, wouldn't it be more profitable to our allies to send us all out into the fields to do the dirty work without payment and then <laughs> decide to operate the mill themselves? But if the Americans don't pay for rebuilding the mill, who will? The Third Reich. The Nazis? I don't follow you. There's Nazi gold in this house, a great deal of it. Why do you suppose I stay here with a couple of women I loathe and despise? This house will give up everything it's earned through betraying us. All we need to start the mill is a man with ambition who hates not only the Nazis and the Varins, but all those who are taking advantage of us now. But there are allies. They, they fought for us. Oh, Katri, we're living in the present, not the past. What difference is there between conquerors? Now, how about that mill? I know the people in this town better than anyone. Give me a chance. I remember, the allies may oppose you. I'm not afraid of them. You'll need help, men who won't scare easily. I'll get them. After all, it's, it's for the good of the town. Yes, yes, and you'll need money. In the top drawer of that desk, you'll find 300 marks in gold. Now, go down to the fields, reclaim your horse, and hire half a dozen men you can trust. 300 marks, that should be easy. Whoa! Turn around now. Turn around. In three days, Bartok, we can have this field plowed. That's what many hands can do. Uh, you're doing pretty well with just one hand. And one horse. Yes. We're lucky to have Catry's horse. I wonder where he is. I wonder, too. The Major's assistant and the only one not here. Frank. Frank. Hello, Nina. Frank, you promised to come back to me. When we met, you said it was better I go home alone. You were right. I found out how right. You said nothing would ever come between us, Frank. I didn't know. How could I have known? Did you really think that we could go on as if nothing had happened? What do you think I feel when I look at Elena, knowing that her child is dead, knowing that your father but and mother... But the war's over. My father's dead. The Nazis are gone. We've got work to do, and I can't stand here and talk. I want to work, too, Frank. I want to help. No one's asked me. Did you expect them to want you? Oh, tell me they're lying, Nina. Tell me that you never changed, that your father didn't work with the Germans, and that your mother didn't hide you away just to keep you pretty while the other people were tortured and killed. Tell me, just say it. That's all I ask, Nina, just say it. Are you the same? Are you the Frank I loved five years ago? You're bitter and angry and full of hate. I hope uh, that... Maybe the lucky ones are the ones that didn't come back. I've got work to do, Nina. This is the last time I want to talk to you. Bartok. Bartok. That's my horse. I need it. Need it? But you lent it to us for the plowing. What are you doing, Katri? Taking my horse. But we've only just started plowing. Everybody seems to be running things in this town except those who belong here. I belong here, and I'm going to do a little taking over myself. 
starting with the mill. With what, Cotry? One old horse? Don't worry, Lance. I have people back of me. Influential people. I'm going to make sure that the mill isn't stolen from us. Those of you who want to be more than slaves can join me. Of what use is the mill unless we grow the wheat? You heard the major. First things have to come first. With me, the first thing is the mill. I'll hire any of you who belong here, but no foreigners. I'll pay you in money, not in promises. How about it, Lance? I'm with you. We'll never grow anything in this graveyard anyway. Matthew! Stephen! Wait a minute. What are you trying to do here, Cotry? We agreed to work these fields. Not some of us, but all of us. We agreed to work together. The Germans are gone, Bartok. We're free men, with the right to work at what we want. I fought in the hills, and I learned something you haven't. Freedom depends on hanging together, not working for your own good. What's going on here? It's Cotry, Major Carson. He's taking the horse away. We counted on it for the plowing. Oh, I see. Well, there's a way to fix that. Can any of you drive a Jeep? Uh, I drove one in Russia. A, a Jeep you Americans sent us. Okay, then take over, Christoph. Yes. Fasten the plow lines to the axle. Katri, I want to talk to you. The rest of you men get back to work. All right, Katri, what's wrong? I've hired some men to work for me, to build a mill. Is there anything wrong with that? Of course not, but you can't build anything worthwhile by stirring up bitterness and resentment. Why did you take the horse? It's my horse, and I have work to do. My work. Katri, I feel that I've made a mistake about you. I'm retracting your appointment as civilian assistant, and if you carry on again as you have today, we'll put the mill out of limits. Is that clear? Very clear. Really, very well, then. Goodbye, Major. How's she going, Kristoff? Not <clears throat> bad, Major. If you can leave the Jeep with us, we'll make out very well. Okay, it's yours. I'm not so sure that you should stay in the driver's seat. After all, you're the town doctor, you know. I should be finding you an office. Oh, but I'd rather be here working with the people. Uh, in an office, I would lose my value as a weather vane. As a what? You know, a way of telling how the wind blows. <laughs> well, how's it blowing now? In my opinion, Major, it has changed from good by not so good to not so good by bad. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars will bring us Act Two of The Master Race. And now, here are two young ladies discussing an ever-fascinating subject. And I saw a simply divine blue wool dress in Smith's window and the most adorable little hat. Double is, Mary, I can't afford the time or the money right now to go in and get them. You know, Anne, what I've decided about my clothes? I'm just going to make the things I have do for a while. Well, so will I, I guess, but it's no fun. Oh, I'm going to make it fun. I've got a plan. I call it my self-improvement plan. Phew! <laughs> Sounds terrific. Now, don't laugh because it's good. I began a few days ago. I'm going to streamline my figure, brush my hair every night till it shines, and work on my complexion. Then when I get some new clothes, they're really going to look like something. Hmm, exercises for the figure, brushing for the hair, but, but what about complexion care? That's harder. Mm -mm, not with my Hollywood beauty facials. I've been taking them a week now, and my skin feels smoother already. Hollywood beauty facials? Oh, let me in on them, Mary. Are they expensive? Just the price of a cake of Lux toilet soap, Anne, dear. That soap has the most wonderful, creamy lather. Well, no wonder practically all the stars use it. It really does things for the skin. Yes, regular care with Lux toilet soap's creamy, active lather makes skin lovelier. In recent tests of Lux toilet soap facials, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. They're easy and quick, these facials. You just cover your face generously with the creamy Lux soap lather and work it in thoroughly. Rinse with warm water and then a dash of cold. Pat gently with a soft towel to dry. These beauty facials leave my skin feeling so soft and smooth, looking so fresh. Why don't you try this plan of regular active lather facials with Hollywood beauty soap? Get some fine white Lux toilet soap tomorrow. Let this gentle care help your skin to be lovelier. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act 
two of the master race. Starring George Coloris, Nancy Gates, Stanley Ridges, Paul Guilfoyle, and Helen Beverly. It is evening in the Belgian town of Cola, where less than 12 hours ago, the Allies have taken over and begun the work of reconstruction. Now in a bedroom of the Varen House, the man who was once Colonel von Beck is waiting in the semi-darkness, waiting for the seeds of doubt, suspicion, and mistrust which he has planted to take root. You want me to turn on the light, Colonel? Uh, oh, please, yes. And the name is Ferdinand Varen. Mm. They'll be coming back soon from the field. Are you sure that Katri is the right man to rebuild the mill? Is there any reason why he wouldn't be? I went to the market, or what's left of it this afternoon. Oh, really? You're a woman of courage, Martha. Unless my being here has already softened the feelings of the people towards you. There was talk of Katri. He's an impetuous man, not always given to good judgment. You should be glad that they're discussing Katri and not you. In choosing Katri to rebuild the mill, I've chosen someone who's foolhardy enough to run the risks. Ah, Katri's a tool, Martha, nothing more. When the mill is built, I'll find a way of getting rid of Katri, and you and I... We'll own it. Come in. Oh, come in, Nina. Well, what do you learn in the village? The people are getting ready to rebuild the church. The Major's promised we'll have a priest soon. <laughs> the Major and his promises. Eh? Mother, I'd like to help. The Major's ask for contributions. I think what money is in this family, Nina, can be put to better use. But isn't there anything we can do here? This is the town where I was born. You don't know what the people think of me, of all of us. You heard what your uncle told you, Nina. Oh, wait a minute. Might be a very good idea. You will take a financial contribution to the Major, Martha. It'll help our position in the town. All right. In the morning. And you know, in this case, you saw more clearly than I. Now, Martha, I'd like to talk to Nina alone. Yes, Ferdinand. Of course. I'll be downstairs in case you want me. Right. Nina, how did you learn about the church? I went to the field today. I heard them talking. Oh, you went to the field, eh? I'll never go there again. Why? Oh, I don't know. It seems as if everything were going wrong. I I'd hoped for so much when the Germans left. What happened, Nina? Well, first of all, Katri came and took his horse away. Uh -huh. It started them quarreling and taking sides. Too bad. Hotheads like Katri shouldn't be encouraged. But wh why, why did you go to the field at all? Well, I thought there might be work for me to do. I... <laughs> you went to meet Frank Bartok. Now, why don't you admit it? Yes, I went to see him. And like all the rest, he... I don't want to talk about it. Like all the rest of them, he didn't want you, eh? Why do you care so much? Nina, Nina, you're a very beautiful young girl. You're too good for them. But haven't you any prettier dresses than that? Yes, but the other women... They'd they... be jealous, what of it? Haven't you a right to beauty, to happiness? I, I don't know. Look... Look your hair. Well, ribbons are for little girls, don't you think? I never thought about it. Well, I want you to, Nina. Let, let me take off the ribbons. Why, you should wear your hair up. So. Look in the mirror over there. See if I'm not right. Well, you like it? Yes. Turn around. Ah, you make me see what you can be. And don't waste your time on little people. No. no. I'm very pleased with you. Come here, Nina. Kiss me. No. No, let me go. Oh, you're, you're frightened. Of course I'll let you go. There's nothing to be frightened of. Good night. Good night, my dear. Will you call me early? I must go to see the Major on important business. Well, Prestock, come here a minute, will you? Yes, Major. Look, I thought you might be interested in this note sent by one of the Germans in the prison camp. He writes, Sir, may the undersigned return their prisoner pay to your command for use in the town of Kola. And it's signed by three of them. 
Ludwig Altmaier, Franz Gruning, and Albert Bernhardt. I've sent for Altmaier, but before he comes, I wondered what you'd make of it. Uh, I don't know, Major. I, I cannot tell. Mr. Ferdinand Barron to see you, Major. Oh, thanks. Bring him in, Mr. Well, how are you, Mr. Barron? How do you do? Sit down. I believe you know Captain Forsyth and Lieutenant Krestov. Yes, I met the lieutenant when we were in the prison camp. Major, my, my visits of a somewhat personal nature. You can talk freely. We're all allies. Yes, yes, of course. Well, as you probably know, I'm a stranger in Kola. My home was in Valenta in France. But when we were released, I thought of my brother and went to his house. You can imagine my feelings when I heard what my brother had been. I assure you, Major, it was no easy matter for me to be friendly with his wife and daughter. They were unharmed. And my whole family is gone. It's very kind of you to take care of them, Mr. Varon. The survivors must stick together, whatever they've been, if only to exterminate our enemies more thoroughly. Our enemies? Does that include those Germans Hitler put into concentration camps? Now, Lieutenant, I don't know why you've chosen to misunderstand me. I, I also bear Nazi wounds. By the way, Mr. Varon, how's your leg doing? Oh, as well as could be expected, Major. Thank you. While you're here, why don't you let the doctor have a look at it? Oh, I'd be very glad if Lieutenant Krestov would. If you put your leg up here, Mr. Varon. Did you bandage this yourself? Uh, I, I had some medical attention. There was a doctor fighting with us. Oh, you were lucky. Uh, would you hold that, please? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it passed through, fortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, the wound is amazingly clean. The wound's clean? Why do you say amazingly? I'm sure Lieutenant Krestov's observations were purely medical. Oh, I beg your pardon, Lieutenant. Owing to the delicate situation of my sister-in-law, I'm possibly oversensitive. And now that Katri has been seeing her, I... Katri? Yes. Yes, incredible as it is, after everything my brother did to Katri, Martha Varin and he seem to have banded together. Banded together? How? Well, you see, my sister-in-law is a wealthy woman, and if Katri were to gain control of her money, there's no t telling where he might lead the unfortunate people of this town. We've had an example of that already at the field. That's just what I mean. It's most difficult for me to say this, but I felt it my duty. Major, if I... Have your permission to report from time to time. Perhaps my presence here might be of some use to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Varen. Thank you, Lieutenant, for your thorough examination. Good day. Good day, Mr. Varen. Want a weather report, Major? Why were you so rough with him, Doc? The wound is very fresh. I've a better reason. His eyes. His eyes? What's wrong with his eyes, Forsyth? Nothing. That's what I mean. They didn't have the haunted look of the rest of the people in this town. Exactly. And in my opinion, the weather is now not so good by dangerous. Mrs. Varon is here to see you, Major Carson. Mrs. Varon? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Varon? How do you do, Major? I heard that you were rebuilding the church. I... I want to make a contribution, if you'll let me. Excuse me, Major. The prisoner you sent for is here. Oh, thanks. I wonder if you'd pardon me, Mrs. Varon. I won't be long. You're quite welcome to wait in the next room. Of course, Major. I'll be glad to wait. Corporal Thank Ludwig you. Altmaier, Major, of the German Fifth Corps. Come in, Altmaier. I received the note that you men sent, and I wondered if you had anything more to say. Well, if I don't have anything else to say, sir. Why did you send it? I... I don't know how to tell you, sir. Would you rather go back to your cell, Altmar? No, sir. I don't know if I can explain this to you, sir. Once you are made to believe that most of the human beings in the world are vermin, why you can even be proud of your crimes against them. Why not if just exterminating vermin? I was like that. I believed that. Mm -hmm. And when did you begin to change your mind? First on the Russian front, the Russians didn't fight like vermin. The new and the British began to bomb all of the, the whole of Europe. Vermin don't build so many planes and such good ones. And then we saw your planes flying over at us from the Russian lines. Vermin don't get together that way. I wonder, do you understand, sir? No, I think perhaps you have to have lived under National Socialism to understand. I can still remember that day I chanced to gaze at myself in a piece of broken glass in a house we had entered, and I knew that I was rotten from end to end. I remember a thought came to me. If 
I was as rotten as I was, how did I stay in one piece? And then I asked of myself, who made me this way? And then I began to search about. An officer was staring at me, staring straight through me. I couldn't help it, I stared right back at him. I couldn't stop. He grabbed his revolver and smashed it across my jaw. He shouted at me, you vermin. He was Friedrich von Beck. He was a colonel in charge of instructing us about the master race. They were masters, all right. And of me, too. I see. And now? So I've got to ask you, sir. I don't care what I have to do or for how long, but you've got to tell me if it is possible. Sir, I want to know if before I die, someone, someone I don't care who, some old woman or a child perhaps could look at me and say, he is not a, a Nazi anymore. He's a human being. Altmaier, you know that millions of men and women and children are dead. You've seen to it that they can't talk about the future. They can't wake up and say, let's forget the whole thing. One thing I can tell you. You may be tried and judged. I can also tell you this. We're trying to build a decent world. And to make a decent world, we'll need decent Germans. That's all. Corporal, you can take the prisoner back. You know, all you people of Kola, that I'm a British captain, not a priest. But I feel that at this first service in the church we are rebuilding, someone should try to put in words what this must mean to all of us. And I believe that in a humble way, it stands for the triumph of the Christian spirit over war and want and deprivation, and above all, over suffering. All of you here have suffered. For five long years, you've never compromised with evil, never spared a drop of blood to resist the forces of destruction. <laughs> Today, in this church, you have the symbol of your victory. A victory in which each one of you has shared. Nina. Nina. Nina, oh Nina, darling. Oh, Frank, I can't go on being hated forever. Just because I haven't suffered as much as some. Oh, my darling. All of a sudden, when you started to cry there in the church, the whole thing became clear to me. You're as much a victim of the Nazis as Helena or, or anyone. I guess we all are, every human being in the world. What right has any one of us to claim victory to ourselves? Victory is for those who want it. It's yours every bit as much as mine. But they won't let me forget the past, Frank. We mustn't forget the past, Nina. We must wipe it out by the way we fight for the future. I need your love to do that. You need my love, Frank. Just as much as you need mine. That's the truth, and that's what's wonderful about it. You look different already. Like the earth after a spring rain. Oh, Nina. Just came from the church, eh, Martha? You leave your contribution? I gave it to the Major before church. Well, you look worried. What's the trouble? The Major asked me to wait. He was having a prisoner brought in to talk to. Yes? I overheard them. The prisoner mentioned you by name. What? Ferdinand. What if the Major should release the prisoner? Never mind about that. What was the prisoner's name? Altmaier. Ludwig Altmaier. I learned from the guard that he fought at Kiev in 1943. Altmaier? Alt... Oh, yes. If I recall, there was an incident with a man named Altmaier. Does he know I'm here? No. He simply told the Major about a Colonel von Beck who had abused him. Yes? It meant nothing to the Major, of course, but it terrified me. What will this do to us, to Nina? It needn't do anything to us. The whole town has been saying they may give limited freedom to the German prisoners. That must be prevented. 
Yes, I think this is a time when Catri will be useful. Prevent it or not, so long as Altmaier lives, we're all in danger. I know, Martha, I know. Hand me my cane and jacket. I'm going to pay a call on Catri. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars will return in Act Three of The Master Race. You know, even the nicest disposition gets a little frayed around the edges these days. Here's what we mean. No, Sue, I just can't go with you to that salvage meeting tonight. It's been rush, rush, rush all day long. Seems as though I never get a minute to rest. Well, now, this case isn't as hopeless as it seems. Because, you see, Jane has just bought some of the Screen Stars beauty soap, and she's thinking to herself... Maybe after I've had my bath... Oh, thank goodness there's plenty of hot water. I'll just unwrap a fresh cake of Lux soap. Mmm, this lather is extra creamy. And so fragrant, too. I think I feel better already. And a little while later... Hello, Sue. Sorry I was so cross. I can make it after all. Where shall I meet you? Screen stars, women everywhere, have found their complexion soap, Lux toilet soap, makes a refreshing bath that's a quick beauty pickup. The rich lather whisks away the day's dust and grime in a jiffy. And more than that, it leaves skin delightfully fresh and sweet. Here's what a lovely screen star, Rita Hayworth, says about it. Lux Soap's active lather is wonderfully rich and creamy. It leaves my skin feeling velvety smooth. Makes me sure of daintiness, too. You'll find a Lux Soap beauty bath is luxurious, yet inexpensive. This fine white soap is hard milled, can be used to the last thin sliver. Why not use it for your daily bath soap, too? You'll like the way it refreshes and relaxes. You'll like the delicate flower-like fragrance it leaves on your skin. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll chat with our stars and tell you what we have for next week. Now, here's Act Three of The Master Race, starring George Coloris, Nancy Gates, Stanley Ridges, Helen Beverly, and Paul Guilfoyle. <laughs> half an hour later, in the cellar of the ruined house of Joseph Catry, where the light of a solitary candle throws weird shadows on the wall, Colonel von Beck explains to his host the reasons for his unexpected visit. I came here, Catry, because something has developed that I think you should know about. Something in connection with the mill? No, something that may have a very great effect on all our lives. A German corporal from the prison camp has been calling on the major. Yes. Mrs. Varin overheard. There's every reason to believe that the Major is planning to free the prisoners. Free them? Yeah. Those filthy German swine who just a week ago were burning our homes and murdering our people. The people of the town won't stand for it. Who are the people of the town against the Major? I can promise you, Mr. Varin, that if those prisoners are released, their life in Kola won't be worth a candle. They'll be guarded. I think the Major has work for them to do. Work? Yes, he's outwitted you, Catry. You paid good money to hire six of his able-bodied slaves. So what does he do? For prisoners' pay, he gets the labor of 40 men. To rebuild Kola for the foreigners. What chance have you or I got? We've got to stop it. But how? What can we do? What can we do? Blow up the prison. Don't let a single one of those Nazis escape. Dynamite is what we need, Catry. Dynamite. But where do we get dynamite? I can help you. Drive your horse and car to the village of Carnot. Ask for the brothers Vernier. They're patriots, friends of mine, and they've got dynamite. Now you can go to them now and blow up the prison tomorrow night. I'd help you on No, that. no. I don't need help. When this is done, I want to be able to say I did it. I've waited five long years for this. But it's more than revenge, my dear friend. When the American and British people hear that we've been forced to turn against their soldiers for freeing Germans against us, why, you'll hear their cry around the world to bring their troops home. And we'll be left alone, Catry. What we do here in this one miserable little pockmark on a map will be followed from one end of Europe to the other. We are not alone, Catry. There are people like us in every city in Europe, in every country of the world. And when it's done? When it's done, come to me. We'll call the town together. We'll summon the Major before us. This time, we'll do the accusing. We'll brag we did it into his teeth. Nina, where are you going? Come here a minute. Sit down. It's 7 o'clock. They're having a service at the church. What, another service? 
It's communion tonight. I'll be late. What does it matter you're late? But I have to go. Frank Bartok's waiting for me. Nina, I don't want you to go. I promised I'd be there. Oh, sit down, sit down. I'm late already. I've got to go. How dare you keep repeating that to me when I'm speaking to you? Think I've talked to you and protected you to have you throw yourself away on a country lout like Bartok? I won't have you talk to me like that. Sit down. If you don't let me go, I'll... <gasps> Nina! 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 Where's Nina? What happened to her? On to church. What did you do to her? Answer me. Oh, be quiet. I won't be quiet. What did you do to her? What do you tell her when she's here alone with you? What are you up to? I'm beginning to get remarkably tired of your babbling questions. You're as great a fool as your daughter. I was a fool, Colonel Von Beck. Oh, your conversion to patriotism's touching, but a trifle tardy. You can sneer all you like, because I don't care what they do to me when I tell them you're here. But I don't think you'll do that. And what's to stop The me? German officer you and your daughter have been concealing in your house. What do you think the people of the town will do to you for that? What I'm afraid of now is you, what you're trying to do to Nina. I'll take my chances with them. You know, Martha, you leave me no alternative to the ugly necessity of killing you. You stay away from me. You wouldn't dare. Oh, why wouldn't I dare? Not if you value your own life. You'd never get away from here without their catching you. Uh, certainly not. I wouldn't try to. I'll say that I found evidence of your continued collaboration with the Germans. And in my wrath, I killed you. They'll appreciate both the motive and the act. And then when Altmaier recognizes But in just a few moments, Altmaier will be dead. I happen to know the prison will be dynamited. I'll wait till I hear the explosion and then give myself up with reasonable safety. You know, Martha Valley and I, I gave you your... Don't get away from me. But you are a very silly woman not to take... Nina, you're late. Oh, Frank, I'm afraid. My uncle, he tried to stop me from coming. He said awful things and struck me. Oh, Frank, I'm afraid of him. I'm frightened for Mother, too. Don't worry, darling. If you want, I'll go back with you right after church. Tomorrow, you will have a priest again in Kola. Someone to take his place on this pulpit. Now, this is my farewell. I would like to read to you the words of our Lord, who said, Peace, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Keep. It's the prison! The prison has been dynamited! Are all the prisoners out, Captain? All safe, Major. The fire's under control. That was good work. It's a wonder they weren't all killed. One's in pretty bad shape. Altmaier, he's unconscious. Probably won't live. Well, bring them all in here. Altmaier, too. Bring Katri here. If you say you found him near the prison, he may know what happened. All right. Step in, all of you. Two of you carry that stretcher. You'd better put that stretcher here in front of me. How does he seem, Krestov? He won't live an hour, Major. All right, you men. Who blew up the prison? You did! I see. You all think that? Yeah. Very well. Winning the war isn't pretty. Maybe winning the peace won't be either. But we're going to win it starting right here in Kolar. And we're going to find out who blew up the prison, too. Major Carson, maybe I can help you. You know something about this? Right. Just kill one of the persons who arranged this crime. What are you talking about? Five minutes ago in the house of my sister-in-law, I accidentally came upon a letter to some German fanatics across the border. It was a letter authorizing the delivery of a case of dynamite to destroy the prison. I told you I suspected her. I rung from her the truth that it was to be done this evening. Well, she tried to stop me from coming to you. I fought her off, but I'm partially crippled. She struggled like a madwoman. All my hatred, my anger blinded me. I choked her. Then I rushed to the street to get word to you, and that instant heard the explosion and knew I was too late. Yes, it's quite true. You did warn me about Mrs. Varen. You also warned me about Katri. Warned about me? Katri, you won't help yourself by lying. You blew up the prison. Confess it like a man. You must have had good reasons. But why did you warn him about me? Oh, get hold of yourself, Katri. What are you trying to do to me? The Major will take everything into consideration once you confess. You warned him about me. You came to me. You begged me to blow up the prison. You sent me to get the dynamite to your friends across the border. We were going to call a meeting together. We were going to do the accusing. It'll we... be easier for you if you keep quiet. No one will believe such fantastic raving. Major. Major. Don't he's trying to speak, Cresto. I'm afraid that now he will never speak, Major. Altmaier's dead. Perhaps I can speak for him, Major. 
Before I was taken prisoner, I served with Corporal Altmeyer under Colonel von Beck. Colonel von Beck is in this room. Colonel von Beck? Yes, the man whom you call... Got before. I, too, thought you had tried to blow us up. What else could I think? When he came in, I couldn't understand what he was doing here. But when he started to speak, I began to understand everything. Of course he did it. He killed Altmeyer. They all start by murdering their own kind. Mulhalton! Mulhalton! No. No, not anymore. They have got you now. You didn't fool them. They've made it possible for me and nobody to stand up and tell you to shut your filthy mouth, Colonel Frederick von Beck. German General Staff. Master race. Act like a master now, von Beck. Here are only vermin. Act like a master. How could I guess what he was? He said we'd build things up again. I believed him. He kept saying that he hated Germans. I thought it was right to hate them. I thought it was right to kill them. What have I done? Tachi, a whole war is fought. Millions of people died. And you learned nothing from it. Even now, we can't afford to stop and punish you. We need you too badly. Need me? You want to shoot me like, like a horse that's gone bad. Well, von Beck, what have you got to say? Say what you want me to say. There's no need for words. What I've done will be reflected in the final triumph of the master race. You talk of victory. Victory is a nightmare to you. Something too big for you to handle. In all sorts of alliances, you've defeated our armies before, only to lose your victory by falling out among yourselves. You'll do it again. Our work will see to that. And out of your failures, this time the master race is destined to come to power, not in one or two countries, but everywhere in the world at the same instant. The Third World War will hold no surprises for us. It will be quick and easy, like taking a ripe apple from a falling tree. That's your victory. Finished? Finished. You don't know how finished. Every one of you and your master race. For a long time, we've listened to your lies and half believed them. But now we know you for exactly what you are. A tribe of cunning, ignorant scavengers trying to sell the people of the world decay and suicide as a way of life. We're not falling apart, Von Beck. Far from it. We've got an ambition now, a brand new one. All I used to think of was getting home and forgetting the whole thing, but not now. I've got a life ambition now, to search under every rock, in every ruin, into every pest hole in the world and find the rest of you. And nobody's going to put me off the track of that as long as I live. Your trial will be full and fair and swift. Unlike your master race, we give justice even to the lowliest form of men. <laughs> Citizens of Kola, the court-martial of Colonel von Beck is over. You were so intimately connected with the events of this case that you are entitled to know the results. Colonel Frederick von Beck was duly tried and convicted for violation of the 87th Article of War. He is a Nazi spy and a murderer. The sentence is that he be shot to death with musketry. The sentence has been duly approved and the time of execution fixed as now to take place in the public square. Detail attention. Ready. Aim. Fire. You know, Frank, I feel as if all the evil and suffering and hatred have been suddenly wiped out, as if the world were washed clean. No, Nina. Only one small stain has been wiped out. But we've been given the chance to see more clearly now. We know that freedom isn't something you can take for granted. It's something you have to guard and cherish every hour, every minute of every day. Freedom. It's a good word, isn't it? The best there is.
Now that uh, George Colouris is thoroughly shot, we'll bring him back to life as the good American he really is <laughs> and invite all our stars to take a bow for tonight's difficult and valuable performance. Oh, thanks for making me a member of society again, CB. <laughs> you know, if they give me many more Nazi rolls, I'll start to chew rugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, George, Stanley Ridges has a unique record in this war. Right now, he's serving on three fronts at once. Well, how could that be, Mr. DeMille? Three fronts at once. Well, in tonight's RKO picture, he's an American in Belgium. In the story of Dr. Wassel, he's a naval officer on Java. <laughs> and in the sign of the cross, he's flying in a bomber over Italy. <laughs> how do you get a bomber into the sign of the cross, C.B.? Mm, where there's DeMille, there's a way. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Helen... Uh, this is a modernized version of the sign of the cross, brought up to date. Oh, did you modernize that scene where Claudette Colbert takes a bubble bath? Now, why would you want that changed, Paul? Well, you know, some of the soap you get these days gives off less lather. <laughs> uh, not Lux toilet soap, though, Paul. Oh, are you sure? I certainly am. I use it all the time. And so I'm willing to bet does Nancy. Is that so, Nancy? Oh, that's right, Mr. DeMille. I wouldn't be without Lux toilet soap. Ah. That's why the charming complexion. Uh, with that, plus your acting ability, you, you ought to go far in pictures, Nancy. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Uh, what do you have in this theater next week, C.B.? For next Monday night, we have a very different kind of play from tonight's. A story of life here on the home front. It's RKO's current screen hit, Tender Comrade. And our stars are Olivia de Havilland, June Dupre and Dennis O'Keefe. Uh, <laughs> wars may come and wars may go, we hope for good, but love goes on forever. And in Tender Comrade, love and humor mix with tragedy and courage to make one of the season's most appealing dramas. Sounds great, CB. Good night, sir. Good, good night. night, Mr. Moore. Good night, good night. You certainly mastered the master race. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Olivia de Havilland, June Dupre, and Dennis O'Keefe in Tender Comrade. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. As you read the war news and realize that critical battles lie ahead, remember that their outcome depends on us as well as those who fight. You housewives can make an invaluable contribution by saving all waste fats and greases, straining them into a clean can and rushing them to your nearest butcher. Every drop is urgently needed, so urgently that your butcher is authorized to give you two red ration points plus four cents for each pound. Heard in tonight's cast were Richard Martin as Frank Bartok, Eric Feldery as Altmeyer, and Charles Seal, Paul Theodore, Eric Snowden, Norman Field, Lorene Tuttle, and George Neese. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Tender Comrade with Olivia de Havilland, June Dupre, and Dennis O'Keefe. 24 points for butter? Oh, whatever will I do? Use point-free spry for cakes and pies. It's grand for fried foods, too. Yes, ma'am, use pure spry shortening for all your cooking. Use it instead of butter for white sauce and for vegetables. Let all-purpose spry help solve your ration problem, give you more delicious foods. Tomorrow, get spry, S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Tender Comrade with Olivia de Havilland, June Dupre, and Dennis O'Keefe. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>